All right, you're getting sleepy. We're down to part D already. The miscellaneous part. dx over x cubed minus 1. Well, as soon as you see this, a cubed minus b cubed, there should be the, the good old beacon should be going off. Boop, boop, boop. Because what do we do with this? We factor. It's a standard factor. It's one of those things that you have to memorize. In the brief interval when I taught calculus, it was one of those things that you had to memorize to get out the door at the end of the class. That is not a joke. So, anyway, but it did work. People memorized it. Um, so this is the same then as integral of dx over, is it and a cubed minus b cubed is a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared, right? Remember that one? Let me get the same color. dx over x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1. So now what are you going to do? Because we have here something that we can't factor any further. Well, we'll just proceed as always, right? So let's just think, let's play chess for a minute, because this is all calculus, especially integration. Finding integrals is like exactly like playing chess. We have to sort of think into the future, look at all the possible, you know, it's like the, uh, when they talked in, uh, you know, Stephen Hawking, when he talks about the event horizon, right? There's time moves forward from this moment there's a particular event horizon of all the things that are possible in the future based on the speed of time and, and speed of light. So in the, in the same way there was an event, there's a history horizon, I forget the term you used, for the, for the past. But there's, from this point there's an event horizon. We want to look at all the different possible events, all the possible things we can do here, and which of those is going to lead to something that gives us a solution. So we can see right off the bat after we do our partial fraction decomposition, we're going to have an ln something times ln uh, x minus 1, right? That's a no-brainer. But then we're left with this x squared plus x plus 1. What do we do with that? Well, we're going to complete the square. Right, and then we'll have something where we can use the inverse tangent with a substitution. Hopefully you see that. If not, we'll go through it all. So first we have to decompose. It sounds like that six feet under show, huh? Okay, so this is the same then as a over x minus one plus something over x squared plus x plus one. Now we only need a one in the numerator, right? What do you think we have to put here? Since we have an x squared term, we have an x term and we have an x to the zero. We have we're going to need we're going to have three constraints, three three constraints. So we're going to need three variables. So we're going to have to put in here bx plus c, just to have three three variables and three equations. So now we go. It's the same drill, right, all over again. So we say a times x squared plus x plus one plus bx plus c times x minus 1 is going to equal to 1. So a x squared plus a x plus a plus bx squared minus bx plus cx minus c equals 1. We'll take the x squared terms first. So we have a plus b equals 0, because we don't have one over here. Take the x terms, take the x terms a plus oh, minus b, have that one, plus c, and that also equals 0, right, because we don't have one here. And then we have the x to the 0 terms a minus, oh, we got that one, right? Okay. Minus c equals 1. 
So we can say from this one, we can say now, just solving three equations to three unknowns, B equals minus A. Let's, and then here we have A equals 1 plus C. So here we can say B equals A equals, A equals minus B. Now we'll plug all that into this middle equation. So we have here minus A is minus B. So we have minus B minus B plus C. Oh, solve for C's, right? C equals A minus 1 plus C plus, and A is minus B. So we're going to have minus B for the A term, right? The minus B minus 1. This, for any skip steps like I did right there, that is where all these errors come from. But at some, at, you know, but once you've done the hard part, going through this is really just, uh, you know, it's like lifting weights and not lifting till you're exhausted. All you're doing is proving that your muscle still works. We're just proving that the, that we can still write algebraic equations. So we have your minus B minus B minus B minus one equals zero. So minus three B equals one B equals minus one third. So then that means that A is minus B, so A is gonna be one third, and C is one third minus one, which is minus two thirds. So those are our three coefficients. Now, because the A term is already such a layup, I'm not even gonna worry about it, but let's, let's just for the for the heck of it, let's complete the square. So what we've got here is we have bx plus c over this thing. So we just split it into two fractions, right? Now for the, let me erase all this crap so that you can see what I'm gonna do here. So we have, I'll leave the answer. That's the phenomenal thing about streaming video, is that you have the whole history horizon behind, behind me that you can rewind, right? I wonder what Stephen Hawking would say about that. Does fast forward and rewind equal, equate to the event horizon? Well, certainly to one possible state or outcome. Anyway, that's getting, uh, getting too uh, frivolous here. All right, so what we have then is integral of b minus one-third x minus two-thirds over x squared plus x plus one. So we split it up, right? We take the new, each term and put it over the denominator independently. Integral, so we have minus, minus one-third integral of x over x squared plus x plus one minus two-thirds integral of dx, right, dx over x squared plus x plus 1. Now this one here, it's a layup, right? We take this, u equals that, and the du is 2x. We have an x term, so we're good to go there with a simple substitution. In this case, we have to complete the square, right? So we want, if, if x squared plus x If x squared plus x is part of a polynomial of the form a plus b squared, then what does the final term have to be? Well, this, is, this middle term is 2ab, right? 2 times a times b. The a is 1, so b is going to have to be 1 half, because 2 times 1 times 1 half is 1, but then b squared is going to be 1 fourth, plus 1 fourth. So, when we have, so we have that, and then we're going to have plus one minus one fourth, which is going to be three fourths, right? Because we have to, we can't change the nature of the equations, but we can always add zero. We can always add one fourth and subtract one fourth, which is the same as adding zero. So then this becomes minus two thirds, the integral of dx over x plus one half squared 
plus the square root of 3 fourths squared. And here you can see this immediately as an inverse tangent. We just have to do u. u equals x plus 1 half, and then we get, and we have, and we, uh, you have to, well, for, no, it's a little, it, I mean, there's one other messy step. You have to divide through, we're going to divide through the bottom by square root of 3 fourths squared, and then the top. So this is going to be 1 over square root of 3 fourths squared. So we're going to, so doing this all in my head, we're going to have a minus 2 thirds times 1 over 3 fourths is the same as a over b times d over c, 4 thirds. 3 fourths squared is, and we're going to have down here then, this then gives us, it's the a over x. You know, it might be much easier just to look it up or memorize the inverse, the inverse trig functions in terms of the a, x squared minus a squared version. I'm not even going to finish this. It's this part is over my head. I'm a dumb guy. I can only do this kind of stuff. All right, so anyway, remember the four principles of, of partial fractions. First, you have to factor the bottom as much as you can. Then you have to write it as a separate set of fractions. And then make sure you have all the terms in order to accommodate the largest exponent in the numerator. You may have to add just regular terms like an x term or an x squared term without being in a fraction in order to get your polynomial to the right order. Then it's just a matter of solving the, the messy algebra so that the coefficients equate. You get one constraint for each power of the variable. Then you have a set of simultaneous equa linear equations you solve. And then you plug it in and do your integrals, most of which turn out to be ln, but then some, some don't. Okay, send all your problems to solve at midnighttutor.com.